And uh, why don't we uh, take our first break? Hey, thanks for checking out Front Row at the Freak uh, Show. This here is the and, second uh, hour of the podcast I have, uh, from a Monday, here. March 23rd. Um, Enjoy. As you know, big George Carlin fan. And uh, I almost went with Chris Rock, but um, I didn't because he has got a nice jobs, first careers bit. But uh, uh, I didn't. Um, so I went with this George Carlin fan of empathy, and uh, we'll let it roll. We'll take our break. We'll be right back after this. Six four six 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 eight eight seven five six. The great George Carlin. Good to have a little sip of this. The water, I assume, is still safe to drink in New York, huh? Actually. Actually, i got to be fair with you. I'm only setting you up a little bit. It's just a, a, not a trick question, but it's just a setup because I don't really care about the water, to tell you the truth. I just love to hear the answer to that question. I ask that question everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, I say, how's the water? Haven't gotten a positive answer yet. Not one. Last year, I was in 40 states, 100 cities. Not one audience was able to say to me, yes, enjoy some of our fine local water. It is pure and it is good. Of course, I know a lot of people don't talk that way anymore, but nobody trusts the local water supply. Nobody. And that amuses me. I like that. I admit I'm a bit perverted, but it amuses me that no one can really trust the water anymore. And the thing I like about it the most is it means the system is beginning to collapse and everything is slowly breaking down. I enjoy chaos and disorder. Not just because they help me professionally. <laughs> They're also my hobby. You see, I'm an Entropy fan. I'm an Entropy fan. When I first heard of Entropy in high school science, I was attracted to it immediately. When they told me that in nature, all systems are breaking down, I thought, what a good thing. What a good thing. Perhaps I can make some small contribution in this area myself. And of course, it's not just in nature. In this country, the whole social structure just beginning to collapse, you watch. Just beginning now to come apart at the edges and the seams. And the thing I like about that is that it means it makes the news on television more interesting, makes the television news more exciting, makes it more fun. I watch television news for one thing and one thing only, entertainment. That's all I want from the news, entertainment. You know my favorite thing on television? Bad news. Bad news and disasters and accidents and catastrophes. I want to see some explosions and fires. I want to see shit blowing up and bodies flying around. I'm not interested in the budget. I don't care about tax negotiations. I don't want to know what country the fucking Pope is in. But you show me a hospital that's on fire and people on crutches are jumping off the roof and I'm a happy guy! I'm a happy guy! I'm a happy guy! I want to see a paint factory blowing up. I want to see an oil refinery explode. I want to see a tornado hit a church on Sunday. I want to see people, I want to know there's some guy running to the Kmart with an automatic weapon firing at the clerks. I want to see thousands of people in the street killing policemen. I want to hear about a nuclear meltdown. I want to know the stock market dropped 2,000 points in one day. I want to see people under pressure. Sirens, flames, smoke, bodies, graves being filled, parents weeping, exciting shit, my kind of TV. I just want some entertainment. It's just the kind of guy I am. It's the kind of guy I am. You know what I love the most? When big chunks of concrete and fiery wood are falling out of the sky and people are running around trying to get out of the way. Exciting shit. That's why I watch auto racing. That's the only reason I watch auto racing. I'm waiting for some accidents, man. I want to see some cars on fire. I don't care about a bunch of redneck jack-offs driving 500 miles in a circle. 500 miles in a circle? Children can do that, for Christ's sake. Doesn't impress me. I want to see some schmuck with his hair on fire running around punching his own head, trying to put it out. I want to see the pits explode. I want to see a car doing a 200 mile an hour cartwheel. Hey, where else besides auto racing am I going to see a 23 car collision and not be in the son of a bitch? And if a car flies out of control, lands in the stands and kills 50 spectators, fine. Fuck them. Serves them right. They paid to get in. Let them take their chances with everybody else. Just means more fun for me. More fun for me. Hey, at least I admit it. At least I admit it. Most people won't admit to those feelings. Most people see something like that on television and say, oh, isn't that awful? Isn't that too bad? <laughs> Lying asshole. 
lying asshole. You love it and you know it. Explosions are fun. And hey, the closer the explosion is to your house, the more fun it is. Did you ever notice that? Sometimes you have the TV on and you're working around the house. Some guy comes on television and says, 6,000 people were killed in an explosion today. You say, where, where? He says, in Pakistan. You say, oh, fuck Pakistan. <laughs> Too far away to be any fun. But if he says it happened in your hometown, you'll say, whoa, hot shit. Come on, Dave, let's go look at the bodies. Let's go look at the bodies. I love bad news. I love bad news. Hey, the more bad news there is, the faster this system collapses. Fine by me. Fine by me. Don't bother my ass. Don't bother my ass, none. I'm glad the water sucks. I'm glad it sucks. You know what I do about it? I drink it. Oh, what a classic. What a classic. <laughs> I love that, you know, yes, I, I've, then... I've listened to so much Carlin, and I, you know, I know all of his routines, and that is one of my favorites. And I think, you know, a great pick on your part, because that's exactly what I was talking about just last week with, the, with regards to hope. You know what I mean? My hope lies in what comes after the collapse, and what comes after all of this shit finally uh, caving in on itself. So... You know, I, I totally agree with the sentiment behind that funny little rant of his, which is, you know, when I see bad news, when I see that, uh, you know, looks like we're we're going to end up, um, uh, you know, looks like the economy's tanking or we're going to end up in World War III, I see us being that much closer to being able to get past all of this bullshit and try to, to build something worth fucking living in, you know? I do. I do. And, um, uh, from my perspective, uh, I think it's it's um, something I wanted to hit on, and I you know I guess obviously we're going to be jumping right into haranguing around here six four six 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 eight eight seven five six. But um, you know people ask a lot, you know, uh, you know, or or you see a lot of uh, interviews. When's the collapse going to happen? Are we headed for collapse? Um, how long, how bad, we are in the collapse, right? We are collapsing. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, the four yeah. horsemen are riding, man. You know, it's, it's, you know, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, hey, don't get me wrong. I, I think there, there clearly is another 07, 08 style uh you know, one of those overnight meltdowns, right? But we are collapsing. We are seeing the end game. We are seeing what, uh, you know, 200 plus years of this system has produced. And, and that's where we're at. And we are at the end game. We are, we are you know, by, by all accounts, right, you, you probably have to tip your hat to them a little it probably should have collapsed, you know, officially a long time ago. But uh, obviously very smart, uh, greedy psychopaths at the top, and they have learned how to keep it all propped up. So, um, you know, again, obviously George Carlin uh, ahead of his time, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I, I forget, I didn't even look actually what year that was, but it had to be in the 90s maybe early 2000s, but, uh, uh, you know, so ahead of his time. And, and, you know, I mean, you know, he said it himself, you know, the, the cracks are starting to show. The It's starting to come. And, you know, I read an article the other day. I mean, uh, you know, Los Angeles is like a year away from from uh, from some real water issues, right? Some, like, water having water issues. So it's 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 crazy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, it looks like we got a caller here. We do, we do. Let me um let's take a caller. Let's get right to it. I think this but is this the three oh four. This I think is Brian. I think, I think this it is, is uh I think this is um no no I wish I was data. <laughs> so uh, no, let's, let's kick it off 
Uh, we'll start haranguing around uh, with the 304. And uh, but let me just uh, six four six 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 eight eight seven five six for anyone and everyone that wants to to give a call, please join the live chat. Uh, front with the freak show dot com at atomizer one uh, in the tweet world or at at the freak show. Uh, and without further ado, let's uh, let's see what's on the three hundred four's mind this week. Brian, hey, that you? Guys, this is Brian. Yeah, it's Brian. Uh, hey, good to hear from you, man. We, rec- we recognize yeah. you now. <laughs> right on. Uh, How you doing, man? Um, I'm doing all right. It's good to hear from you guys. Um, love the show tonight. You guys have had a, well. a lot of important topics. Um, you know, there's only so much you can fit in a show. I know that. Um, I, I guess I'd like to start. I was listening to Carlin and... You know, every time you listen to them, you hear something different. And I think you guys are like Carlin in a way. And the reason I say that is if if you look throughout history, the person who could always say the things that were wrong was the jester. Okay, you look at, you know, in the medieval court, you know, there was the king and everybody would come in and everybody tried to appease the king, but the jester could make fun of the king, you know, the the king's entourage, anybody really, because, you know, he was the news. He was funny. And I think that's how a lot of the real news gets through nowadays. And, I mean, not, you know, you guys aren't comedians, true, but, you know, you are laid back and you're not, you know, on one of the national outlets. But I don't think they would ever let people like you or some of the other people on a national news because you don't fit the narrative. Right. You know, you're, right. you're not you're not trying to conform to what it is, you know, the State Department or anybody else wants to be put forth, you know, out to the the social mind, as it were. Yep. Um No you're well, I mean number one, Brian, I mean appreciate the uh the kind words. I, I think calling us jester was a kind word. I think. I think I know what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, was, no, but uh you know it's uh, I know I know, um, you know it's funny because I said that I almost went with the Chris Rock piece, which was really good. But I also, um, you know, I have so much fun going and trying. You know, like it's it's a lot of work, but it's it's also you know I'm listening to comedy, so how much work is it, right? But uh, uh, you know, I do have to point out since you're bringing up the topic, um, and I don't know if you're familiar with him because actually I didn't really find out until about him until after his career, and that's Bill Hicks, right? And oh, absolutely. The, Back into the left. I yeah. mean, the great Bill Hicks, you talk about a man ahead of his time. Uh, absolutely. You know, I, I mean, 88, 89, calling, calling George, you know, Daddy Bush uh, the seed of Satan. And, um, uh, you know, he was uh, – the, the, so the problem with Hicks and trying to get him on in a clip is he was such a physical comedian, right? And, and that right. it doesn't play as well as just audio. So, like, there's a piece that I'm, I'm watching it, right? And it's literally him bouncing up and down on a chair from behind. Well, you know, he's got his ass to the crowd. And he's bouncing up and down pretending he's Reagan getting fucked in the ass, right? And... <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, I do. You know, uh, just since uh, obviously since you brought it up, I, I got to, I got to, uh, I got to give kudos to, to the great and late, unfortunately, Bill Hicks. Oh yeah, Absolutely. and you know, yeah. to uh, to to continue on in that vein, I, first of all, let me say, um, uh, not the first time uh, I've been compared to to Carlin. Obviously, you know, with the the twist that I'm not a comedian. Uh, but I got to say, to me, it's the highest praise I could ever hear. If I'm um, uh, doing even a fraction of what he did to to open my mind, and I'm doing that for others, I'm a happy fucking guy. But I also just wanted to mention that uh, you know when we talk about that being a uh, you know going back to to jesters and and whatnot, it really is an age old uh, kind of thing to use comedy to try to uh, make people a little more aware of what's going out there, going on out there. Um, you know, before Carlin, of course, there was Lenny Bruce, um, you know, and there's, you know, I'm sure before Lenny Bruce, there was somebody else. And, you know, as long as uh, people are allowed to get up in front of a microphone or just in front of a crowd 
and be able to uh, you know try to speak the truth and maybe put a little bit of a funny twist on it if they uh, if they have the the wherewithal to do that. I think is uh, you know this this is what it takes. This is what it, it is required to really reach people. I mean you gotta you gotta do something. And uh, as you said, Brian, I, I think that the the current news media has no interest in that. They they have a narrative, like you said. Uh, that they want to put out there, whether it's the narrative uh, being fed to them from the White House or, you know, if you're watching Fox News, it's the narrative being fed to them by the 1%. <clears throat> it really doesn't matter, but they they could care less about the truth. And, you know, to me, truth is all that matters. I, I put something up online the other day that I, I came across that I thought was an excellent, excellent quote, and it wasn't signed, but uh, it said, I would, I would rather lose every friend that I have uh, speaking the truth than be popular for uh, twisting it. You know, and and that's me. I, I I'm just a dedicated vessel of truth, and I don't care who I piss off. And if you don't like me for it, fuck you. You know. Absolutely, and it's you know it's important. It's important what you guys are doing, and a lot of people don't understand that what you guys are doing is dangerous. You know, when you drag huh? the truth, kicking Wait the truth into the fight. Well, what, what you're doing is important, but it's also dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, here's the thing. Okay, so, oh, and by the way, Lenny Bruce is actually someone um, Bill Hicks attributed to his comedy. That's yeah. one of. Oh, absolutely. His I mean, he the, started it all. I mean, Lenny Bruce. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Colin, Colin also uh, gave props to Lenny Bruce, and uh, it's funny if you ever hear oh, a story uh, from interviews of when he actually met Lenny Bruce. Um, something to do with uh, being in the back of a paddy wagon was kind of interesting. <laughs> I I always compare Carlin to sort of um well back in my heyday a creeper buzz okay so you listen to Carlin and you know you're laughing at these jokes you hear the audience in an uproar when he's you know talking about drinking the water but later on a lot of those people probably realized what it is he was talking about right you know it, it's it is funny and it's comical but you know he's trying to say like you know look at all these meatheads look at these people who don't get it they're just mindlessly cheering for the madness on the news and they don't really understand what's happening you know yep. and going back to what you guys said earlier talking about you know storing the data and your phone calls your emails and all this people some people think okay well you know they're listening no they're storing all of your data so when they do decide to come after certain people all they have to do is refer back to all this stored data, see how they can twist the Patriot Act, find out how you violated it, and lock you up in a cell with no windows. <laughs> yeah, and no, tri- and no trial, and probably uh, in that lovely little piece of Cuba that we still hold on to. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, the red you're absolutely right. right. You're absolutely right. And, and you know, it's. Um, um, I have to say, when it comes to Carlin. He is. He opened my eyes to so many things. Whether it was his uh, rants on religion, his rants on um, uh, politics, on anything, you know, I, I found throughout the course of my history and listening to him, I don't think I've ever actually disagreed with any of the politics behind his comedy ever. And you know, that's not just me being a blind sheep. I think the guy, you know, was as as we all hope to be, a seeker of truth and somebody who found a really entertaining and interesting way to share that with people. Agreed. Excellent. Agreed. Um, and, and, you know, I, <laughs> to try to tie it back in and bring us back around to the main topic of the evening, um, this is what I find so frustrating, right? Uh, as I said, well, you know, when did that clip come from? I, I mean, a minimum of 15 <clears throat> Excuse me, a minimum of 15 years ago, uh, you know, in the 15 to 20 range, uh, certainly George switched over political type humor, you know, early mid 80s, somewhere in there. So, you know, a good 20, 25 years of, of uh, you know, uh, that he was not just talking about getting high and, and, and uh, uh, pressing the cat's ass button, right? Oh, yeah, and yeah. Um, so. You know, again, as kind of a tie-in, it's it's, and and we can tie it right back to that hope or belief question, right? It's like, 
you know, here, here, yeah, okay. You, you know, we had a guy. Everyone kind of, you know, as he's as he's up there on stage, you know, making a nation laugh, but also think. And and yet still we're stuck, right? Uh, it's 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 like in one ear and out the next for for ninety nine out of a hundred people, and, yep. and that's what just gets, you know, it's like okay, can't we take what this guy has said and build on it in in any fucking way possible? And it's like no, we've only gone further down the shithole uh, since he that? was uttering those working? words, right? I, I don't understand why it's working. How have we moved so far? I mean, you, you guys asked me last week, you know, what was what was the tipping point for, you know, our current economic situation? What, what was the tipping point for the hive mentality? What was the tipping point for people paying attention to the Kardashians and all this reality TV? And when did we sell our privacy as entertainment and be okay with it? Well, I, I think, you know, we, we touched on this a little bit, uh, I think it was last week, when we talked about uh, Edward Bernays, the uh, nephew of Freud, and I think, you know, the, the tipping point came at some unspecific time, uh, you know, maybe about 50, 60 years ago, maybe a little longer a little or a little less, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it came when, when the powers that be really started to understand the meaning of propaganda. And really started to understand the pliability of the human mind. I mean, you look around, uh, a good example, a perfect example is the Tea Party, okay? <clears throat> These people have no clue what the fuck they're talking about. And the reason they have no clue what the fuck they're talking about is because very masterful uh, propagandists are using uh, emotional buzzwords like uh, communist or, on the other side, liberty or whatever else to completely bypass that outer region of the brain that we have that actually thinks and get to that center portion of the brain that's strictly emotion, okay? If you can appeal to that emotion in people and you can rile them up around these these buzzwords, even if the people have no clue what the words actually mean, they have no clue whether there's there's any positives or negatives to it, they only know what they've been taught. They know communism is bad, liberty is good. So as long as you keep throwing words like that at people, they don't give a shit. And, you know, as long as you're you're keeping people distracted with everything from the Kardashians, as you mentioned, to pro sports, to everything else, um, you know, and keeping them drunk and keeping them, uh, you know, um, uh, living what they think is a life, then nobody's getting all pissed off about it. So it's just this perfect balance that they've managed to, uh, to strike, I think, between um, keeping people uh, not so much happy as complacent, so that they're not going to get out of their seats and start demanding change. And, you know, again, I think that to answer your question, that all started when uh, people started to really understand uh, how propaganda can affect the human mind. And that's why you can sell a story like the, the official cover-up of 9-11. That's why you can, you know, sell people on um, uh, the idea that there, there's actually a democracy here, that we actually have a choice when all you're serving up is two options that are Coke and Pepsi, and you've got a nation screaming for orange soda. You know, it's, it's just a matter of this mind control bullshit. So I, 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 agree, I agree. It, yeah, I mean, um, obviously we're going down a little path here, but um, it, it's, it's, it, I mean, it's a fantastic fucking question, right? It, you know, here's my problems, I guess, with the, 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 some of the premises, you know, you had say like what you referred to last week, Brian, when your tipping point, right? This, the, the the start of the Fed and the central bank, 1910, 1913, right? Mm -hmm. You certainly had at that point, uh, uh, number one, you had, a, well, you had a couple of things. You didn't have uh, quite yet. He didn't really kick in until about the 20s, Eddie Bernays and, and the whole propaganda world. And you certainly had people, uh, like I believe it was uh, Senator... Um, uh, geez, I forget, uh, I forget his name, but you had you had a couple of key people that were really screaming out about um, what the central bank actually was, and um, 
uh, you know, with uh, I, I mean, you can you can Google it and 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 find the quotes from politicians at the time saying, "You people have no idea what what you've just started," and and uh, all sorts of things. And then you can go right up and through when you have a guy like John F. Kennedy getting up at a speech and talking about, you know, the famous quote, you know, we, we find secret societies repugnant. And the fact that there's this, you know, uh, monolithic, uh, uh, you know, there's this, there's this secret organization that has their own military, their own economic means, their own everything that, that is beyond anything you could even think of. Right, a guy like that comes out, says that, and you know, within a year, is 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 popped. Yeah. I don't. I don't know how that answers. Like to me, it's like something else had to happen. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, and yeah. I think you know, it, it, there certainly was some of this going on. You know, prior to Bernays really breaking open the whole uh, propaganda clamshell, I just think that that accelerated things. And I also just wanted to point out, you bring up the central bank. It's really not like we didn't have a central bank before that. It's just that we didn't have a, um, you know, it wasn't a bank so much. as I, I read a great article the other day that talked about J.P. Morgan basically was the central bank before there was a central bank. You know, it was these these powerhouse privateers. Right that were doing exactly, you know, the exact same functions that the central bank does today and who decided who got loans and who didn't get loans and, and things like that. So it's, you know, that, that's just an old fact of capitalism is that there's always going to be the, you know, some sort of institution or individuals or whatever else that are behind the scenes making all the decisions. I mean, that's that's the way it works. That's the only way that it works if you want to say that it works, which I don't. So bringing it back to to the point of of your show tonight, I believe, it, would you say that all these things, the public relations, the 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 Federal Reserve, all these things have been engineered to create what is happening now, to create a public who is either grossly unaware or chooses not to recognize the things that are happening with the financial institutions in their country, and creating a system. To where the capitalist, these collectivist units, as H.G. Wells, so he was a Faustian socialist, I believe, and believed in collectivism. But all this is set up so that they can just keep gouging and gouging out all this money from the American people until that tipping point comes, and then they just walk away and watch it burn. I, I think definitely. I think that um, you know the the folks who do the best at capitalism are the folks that truly understand capitalism and. You know, when it comes to that, I think they, they know full well uh, what they're doing with regards to creating a, a public, uh, what was the way that George Carlin once put it, that's um, uh, just smart enough to uh, uh, to keep going to work every day, but uh, too dumb to ever question, and, and that's what, uh, or at least too distracted. And I think that's what we're, we're seeing, is that that was their goal, and they've accomplished it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's, it's, I, I don't think you can put your finger on... Um, one factor, and I don't think you can put your your finger on you know one person or group of persons. You know, um, it, it it would probably start a whole other discussion and 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 whatnot. But you know, I, I I was really thinking about you know we hear all this about the one percent, right? The one percent, the one percent, the one percent. Well, the seven billion people in the world, right? The one percent. I mean, that, that's, I believe if I have my math correct, still 70 million people, right? Uh, yeah, 1% which is, which... of 7 billion is 70 million, right? And so to think that there's 70 million people that agree <laughs> and are, are directing <laughs> something in one way is, yeah. uh, you, know, got, you know, ludicrous, right? And oh, yeah, and, and the so, reality is... I just want to say, when we talk about the 1%, it's really more of a, a, a symbol than anything, because the reality is we're really talking about 300 families. 
If you look at the latest statistics, it's like 300, maybe 350 families that have as much wealth as, as 50% of the, the bottom 50% of the world. That's, you know, so, so you're right that the numbers don't add up if you really try to take 1% literally. Right. But, but, but what I am saying is that when you, t- when, you know, there is a 1% of the world, right, and you're talking about, uh, you know, 70 million people with a great deal of wealth and power and, and, and other things. So, um, you know, I just think it's fascinating. It's like, where are, the, where are some of these other people, right? I mean, there's got to be some good people in that 1% that have a lot of money, right? Uh, perhaps it's the reason why the shit hasn't totally hit the fan yet. Uh, maybe just something to think about, but, uh, um, Hey, Brian, um, let me, uh, let, let, let's wrap up here. We got another caller. <clears throat> uh, I see the seven, eight, one fantastic call as always. Anything else you wanted to add before we, uh, let you go? Um, no, maybe just real quickly. I'll say I have a friend who works rather high up in, in a government organization. I won't say more than that. <sighs> and me. I asked him about, um, camp and whether they truly existed and he told me he said you know there are things that are going on that are true he said but if it makes you feel any better i believe that all these people will never agree enough to get anything ever moving in any type of direction well you know i I, well said and kind of to my point exactly I, and I understand that sentiment, but at the same time, when you're threatening the, uh, you know, the power that exists in those 300 families or whatnot, I guarantee you they will get on the same page to stop you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you, Brian. Guys, thank man. you so Have much for the call, as always. Yeah, you too. Have a great week ahead. We'll see you next week in the front row. Uh, let me just take uh, 30 seconds here to uh, pause for station identification. And uh, when we come back on the other side, we'll we'll go to the 781, who I believe is uh, Mr. Jimmy. So uh, 30, 30 seconds. Oh, no, this is our minute break. Hold on. Conspiracy, maybe. Screwed. Definitely. Hey, you're listening to the front row at the Freak Show on blogtalkradio.com. For all things Freak Show, please visit us at frontrowatthefreakshow.com. Find us on Twitter, at Atomizer1 and at, at the Freak Show, And, of course... Front Row with the Freak Show on YouTube and Facebook. All right, you freaks be good now, you hear? What up, Freaks? Hey, it's Crafty here with just a quick message for you. Hey, if you're thinking of, uh, of getting a new pet, you know, a dog or a cat, right? That's awesome. But uh, don't be a douche about it. Don't go wasting money at those... Fancy pet stores that lots of times get their animals from those disgusting animal farms that keep them in tiny-ass cages and shit. No, check out your local Humane Society. Seriously, they got a whole bunch of furry friends to choose from that really need you to hook them up. And, they, you know, they get new ones all the time. So, seriously, you will be so glad that you did and that you saved an animal versus supporting that other bullshit. So, so check them out, please. That's your local Humane Society. I'm Crafty. I'm out. Peace. And there you have it. Uh, all right, we got uh, about 13 minutes uh, left on the uh, on the old clock for this evening. And uh, as uh, Adamizer uh, just messaged me, uh, uh, looks like we're never going to get his uh, real thoughts on communism. Um, and uh, <laughs> must be a conspiracy, Adamizer. <laughs> oh yeah, they're all against. Me. Oh, uh, you know, though, I, I just want to just to, to give two seconds before we get to our call. Just to say that um, uh, you know, it's it's in the queue, and the reality is, uh, if you, you you don't have to hear me tell you, you know, it doesn't have to be me sitting here on the radio explaining it to you. All you have to do is look at it this way: if you realized you were lied to about religion, you realized you were lied to about America. Is it really that big of a stretch that you were lied to about capitalism and communism? Maybe go out there, do a little of your own research. Just to see the the other what the other side has to say, you know, and and look at that with an open mind, and that's what what drove it home for me. I mean, if you really understand the simple basics of what communism means, what capitalism means, uh, it's kind of hard to argue in favor of capitalism at that point. Anyway, let's get to our caller. All right, and 
Uh, yes, let's get to our caller, and it looks like Jimmy from the 781. Uh, do not know at this point if he uh, uh, heard my uh, uh, little preamble there, I guess, uh, what you call it, addressing his question from last week, and I guess we'll find out. So uh, let's go to uh, the 781. Jimmy, that you? Yes, it is. Hey, guys. Welcome to the front row. Hey, Adam, I very crafty. Hey, hey. How you doing? Hey, doing all right, doing all right. Still got still got hope, but it's a, it's a, I think it's a new kind, a new brand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I wouldn't Adam expect I, anything I, else. Well, it's something else, I'll tell you what, you know, kind of calling in and, and, and hearing you guys and stuff. I'll tell you, you know, I don't expect. I really don't, you know, I'll be honest with you, Crafty. My expectations have been relatively low. And maybe as a uh-huh. result, I've had a few baseball bats put up inside my head, and that's not so bad, I guess. <laughs> you know? And I tell you what, Adam, <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, I understand what you're talking about when you're like, all right, great. You know, what I'm looking for is when it comes down. And I, and I, and I, and I guess during the week at times I'd find myself thinking, well, what is it? What what is it? What what comes down? You know, so do we want everything to come down, or just parts of it to come down? And I just started thinking, and I and I ended up finding a uh, a documentary. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's very short and uh, to the point. It's called The Story of Your Enslavement. It's got over three million views. It's posted in two thousand. I think I have seen that. I like the title. I'll tell you that. Uh-huh. <laughs> I really like the title, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, talks is, about, is, that talks anim- about how is, is that animated? Human... Is that animated? No, it isn't, no. The animated one no. is the collapse of the American dream. Oh, I thought as a story of your enslavement, it was like an alien comes down and a guy is telling him, you know, like giving him the lowdown on Earth. I think that may and, be a part uh, but, of that. But mostly it's just uh, pictures and a, and, a, and a person presenting their uh, oral argument. Yeah. Um, and what basically this person is saying is is that uh, through the years, um, the elite, whoever they may be from millennia to millennia, I suppose, or, you know, there'll be some will tell you that it's the same group somehow, somewhere. Sure. Um, with that said... Uh, Ultimately, this person has said, the only way out of the cage is to recognize you're in one. And, right, right? so the first thing was that he's brought it through history a little bit, and the idea was that the first form of slavery was one that we're all aware of, the direct, brutal, you know, uh, approach toward getting uh, surplus from, from the people that you own. Okay, but it also took lots of resources for the people who own those people to house them, to feed them, to do a number of other things. So, and many times those the slaves would lose their will and not work very hard. Feudal system, and that was more like okay, we'll treat them, we'll still treat them like cattle, but we'll give them a carrot at the end of the stick. Yep. Okay. Where, but but they mm-hmm. that's where the first place where they incorporated taxes. And where this person quickly jumps to is, okay, he starts going, okay, do you see how, like, you've been farmed, like your ancestors have been farmed, you're, you're no more than cattle? He goes, okay, now let's go to the new farm, democracy, okay? That's the, this is the newest farm. And almost, and this mm-hmm. doesn't go so far as to say it, but I start wondering, hmm, is that why America is considered, you know, the new experiment? Is it, is it because it's the newest farm? the newest approach to gain the greatest productivity from its cattle without with the least amount of overhead. And so if that is the case, Adam Iver, I can I can agree with you. You know what? Let the fences fall. Right, right, exactly. And, you know, it's um, uh, I think it absolutely is the latest round. I mean, I talked about this before, going from feudalism to slavery or to uh, from slavery to feudalism. To capitalism, and, and again, that is what it is. This is the latest experiment in how to most efficiently extract surplus labor or surplus resources uh, from the working people and give them to the people who don't work, the, the owner class. 
Uh, as for what's going to, what needs to fall, um, I think it really is the whole politico-economic system. I mean, on the one hand, I think we absolutely need to see uh, the capitalism fall for us to, to get anywhere productive, and, and we need to you know stop with this competitive economics and start working together to improve everybody's lives. Uh, and then, you know, I think in the reality, yes, democracy has to go too. I, I don't talk about this much, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, at the risk of being unpopular, I'm not a big fan of democracy. I'm not a big fan of settling things by popularity contests, you know. It doesn't work. As a last resort, sure, let's let's go to a, a vote and do that. But I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of, of meritocracy, of, of actually earning your position into, uh, you know, into leadership. Uh, now, of course, you know, that, that raises the question, well, what earns the position into leadership? Uh, you know, I think that can be answered very easily by just saying, you know, we, we can test people for, for basic things. We can test them for intelligence. We can test them for knowledge. We can test them for, for um, uh, uh, you know, morality. Uh, these are all things that, you know, we're not great at testing today, but if we really focused on it, we could get a lot better. And if we only took the people with the highest marks in those three categories, we'd be doing a hell of a lot better than just picking the best face off of the TV and, uh, you know, and, and ending up with, uh, you know, the most popular choice. If my house was a democracy, I got three kids, man. If my house was a democracy, all right, me and my wife would be outvoted every night on what's for dinner and we'd be eating fucking candy and ice cream every night. You know, the, you have to have somebody who has the will and the skill to to lead and to, to make tough decisions and make unpopular decisions uh, when it's the right thing to do. Somebody that puts their flock, you know, and I don't mean to say flock because we're not talking about sheep here, but who puts their the people that they represent and their needs above their own and does what's right for them, even if it means they're going to be unpopular. I think that's, that's what we're really missing here. Well, it's if I can just... Uh... Well, if I can just cut in for a second, I mean, I think you nailed it with, with democracy. I mean, the old saying goes, democracy is uh, uh, two wolves and a sheep uh, voting what's for dinner, right? right. And right. Um, so, uh, but, uh, you know, and obviously I know we're up against it with time a little bit here with five minutes left, but um, I, I have to disagree with, with uh, you know, that the, we can test who we put into leaders because of, you know, uh, wherever that test is going to exist, um, there's going to be uh, people to get around that test, right? And as I believe I mentioned um, uh, earlier in the show that, you know, what we need, you know, the, if you, if you want to get to the essence of or, – or, But the it's more it's more voting on ideas and um action as opposed to voting for um so you know we, at this uh in this day and age and with the technology that we have um you know get an, at least an overall sense of direction that people want to go right i mean you know, right now, what happens? We're, we live in a democracy. We vote for leaders, right? But but after that, we have absolutely no say whatsoever. I mean, do, do you think if if you polled the American people in 2003, do you think that more than 50 percent would have said that we should go to Iraq, or that you know, uh, or that we should, at any point since that we should still be be there? You know, and I would say no. Well, but, but, um, so, but I, I, you know, I think that you're you're. I'm not sure if you're, you're catching the point here because I mean, you can vote on the ideas, and you're still getting the most popular idea, and it's not necessarily the wisest idea. I mean, what we need is is leaders with wisdom, and again, the ability to to make unpopular decisions. Now, I, I you know, you talk about people can can beat the tests and whatnot. You know, if you take a psych profile uh, yeah, to determine true. to determine morality, or you take an IQ test, these are not you know, really beatable tests, even with the, the limited tests that we have today. I think that, that if we really sat down and sought out people who have, um, uh, you know, who are prodigies when it comes to making decisions that are selfless, making decisions that are wise as opposed to popular, that we could actually make some headway with this. And it, it doesn't matter whether, you know, I mean, we, I think we do need leadership. But, I mean, even if you're talking about ideas, 
if you're going with the most popular idea, does not make it the right idea. And it's the same thing about the kids voting for dinner. You know, that's an idea, and they can vote on on ice cream versus uh, you know vegetables. They're going to vote for ice cream every time. And and I don't think you've solved the problem by making it voting on ideas versus voting for leaders. I think that all you've done is continue, you know, has made it uh, even more critical that uh, you know somebody steps up and says, you know, and, and who's earned it, you know, whether it's me, the father in the family situation, or whether it's, uh, you know, Gandhi or MLK in the, the leadership scenario to say, hey, this, you know, th- this is the right thing to do. It may not be the popular thing, but this is, you know, we're going to do what's best for everybody. We're going to make the wise decision here. So I, I don't know. I just think that, um, yeah, you know, we, we really need to look into that. Yeah, I it out of context because, and, and by, by my own fault, um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you when you start thinking about uh, as far as um, uh, uh, you know, it's not it, it's it's not like when I say voting ideas. Okay, uh, you know, should this guy go to jail? And and you click a button on your computer, yes or no? That's that that's not really you know, it's it's too simplistic of a way. Yeah, you know, more in terms of <clears throat> um, uh, you know. Uh, allocation of resources and and other things the 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 pulse of the people uh more than actually you know i, I shouldn't really have said voting i guess you know uh gauging the 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 pulse and the feel of people uh more than uh any one leader see i'm just against i'm against you know Ali, i think anytime you have you say leader then then i'm uh, you know i'm starting to kind of stray away well, no, I mean, uh, you got to understand that leaders, uh, you know, the, the, what we're used to in leadership. Left, yeah, what we're used to in leadership, uh, I can understand you, you you know, running away from that type of concept because, again, we're we're getting at best the most popular choice and at worst the dictator who simply puts himself into power. I can absolutely see that kind of issue. But this whole, you know, philosophy that uh, power corrupts and that there's no such thing as a selfless leader is bullshit, and you can look at history to see it. Again, I mentioned Gandhi and MLK, and, and there's plenty of other people throughout history who put the needs of the people before themselves. Now, it's important to take the pulse, as you say, of what the uh, people uh, want, uh, but that shouldn't I think necessarily we're out of time, be Adam. The, I have to the driving part of the We'll pick it up next week, and that's what it's all about. You know, we'll just pick it up and we'll go from there. I love the I love the talk, love the debate. Uh, it's still still on more. air, so I'm gonna hope we are and say this has been the front row with the freak show. Uh glad to have everyone who tuned in and, and contributed to the show this week. Uh we'll catch you next week, Monday, same time. Uh for the atomizer, I'm crafty. This is front row with the freak show and we are out.